Good Wednesday afternoon. It is September 13th, fresh off of the peak of hurricane season, the climatological peak back on Monday, September 11th. Already this season, 11 named storms. And at one point last week, we had three existing all at once, Irma, Jose, and Katia. Now we're just left with Jose. It was at one point a Category 4 major hurricane, but it's encountering obstacle op after obstacle. And it's weakened to a Category 1, barely a Category 1, with winds sustained as of the 11 a.m. advisory at 75 miles an hour. If you remember, you need 74 mile an hour winds or greater to be considered a hurricane, so just on that edge. Been a really weird track so far, kind of doing a loop de loop here over the open Atlantic, and then eventually it's going to get a drive northwards uh, in a atmospheric setup that's very weak in terms of steering, which is why it's just kind of been meandering in the same spot there. But that'll likely change here in the next few days as the steering picks up and pushes it off towards the north. All right, here's a quick recap on the Saffir Simpson scale. Remember, it goes Category 1 to Category 5, just barely a Category 1 with winds right now of 75 miles per hour in terms of Jose. Here's how it looks. Let's break down its structure. They had some microwave imagery done on this particular uh, cell or the storm. And if you remember, that's like taking an MRI of the storm itself so we can see its internal structures and they determined you know it has some pretty good bones here it's just undergoing a lot of obstacles that's been stopping it from growing you remember it has the potential of doing so it was just a category four a few short days ago we can see some very well defined cloud tops here in terms of some thunderstorm activity but the problem is it's being very heavily sheared from the north the winds are actually suppressing all the storm activity south of the actual center of the storm and that as you know kind of inhibits or stops the growth of these storms it's just barely holding on to that category one status we switch up the imagery now and show you the water vapor to kind of indicate that it is encountering some dry air uh, this shows us where the moist air and dry air is you can kind of see the drier air to the north of the system there uh, being sheared from the north and that's also uh, helping this from not growing very much at the current time let's talk about that wind shear i'm overlaying here something uh, a computer model that shows where the strongest wind shear is. The brighter colors, the yellows, reds, and pinks are areas of moderate to high wind shear. Areas of the blue and lighter blues, low to moderate wind shear. So this computer model is showing and indicating that it's going to be an area of moderate to high wind shear for quite a while now, and that's also going to keep it from strengthening. There may be a little bit of strengthening here in the next few days as it moves into some moderate wind shear, but aside from that, not a whole big uh, growth scenario in store for Jose. Let's get a quick recap, though, on what wind shear is. And uh, vertical growth in a hurricane is essential for it to sustain itself and also to strengthen. But when you get winds high up in the atmosphere blowing at a pretty good clip in speed, it takes those thunderstorms that are growing vertically and shears them, almost blows the tops right off of them so they don't really get a chance to mature and grow and develop. And that's what we're encountering here with uh, Jose in that high wind shear environment. One thing that is certainly helping, although all the ingredients have to be there for sustained growth, are the ocean temperatures. So they've been rather warm here over the past couple of days in kind of the same area where Irma passed through just a few short days ago. We're talking low to mid 80 sea surface temperatures, but it's also having an issue with its track that it's had. It's been moving over the same area, right? And we'll talk about that in just a second. So Jose, about eight to 900 miles off the eastern seaboard. It is relatively far away, but I also want to bring up something and kind of refresh your memory on something you've probably heard a lot this summer, especially if you frequent the beaches, uh, rip currents. Now, rip currents are not caused by hurricanes offshore, but they certainly do increase the frequency of them. Rip currents happen all the time. It's just a matter of if there's a high risk or a low risk during the day that you head to the beach. But when there's increased wave action, when the seas are rough, the rip current risk does go up. Something I want you to take away from this is that it is a strong, narrow current that's flowing away from the beach that sometimes carries swimmers farther out to where they start to panic and need rescuing. But there is a way to beat the rip currents. If you are ever caught in one, all you got to do is swim parallel to the ocean shore and you'll quickly get out of that strong, narrow current and you'll be able to make your way back to the, uh, the beach there. So keep that in mind if you ever are, if you tell your friends about this if they do head to the beach frequently. This is always a good thing to keep in mind. All right, now let's talk models here in terms of Jose and where it may be heading. Now, with a very slow looping pattern, this creates a condition uh, where computer models really have a tough time 
diagnosing and then prognosing where this is going to go. And you can see as we go way out into the future by middle of next week, the uh, error of or the margin of uncertainty, I should say, margin of error grows about a thousand miles in either direction. So this is one model, the GFS, and 20 members of it. That means we ran the same model 20 times with just different factors that would influence the track here, if that makes sense. So there's a quite a large spread as you get very far out into the forecast period. Here's all the other computer models here, showing the same sort of scenario, all agreeing on a, a jog to the north, but it's all what happens as we get into the middle of next week, if it goes farther closer to the east coast or if it goes out into the open Atlantic, which is the most likely scenario here, but it could happen. So we'll watch it closely as we go through that. So what's influencing the steering of this system of Jose. Well, there's a lot of atmospheric patterns. You got to think of a hurricane as a taking the track of least resistance, right? So there's an area of high pressure here off to the west of the system right now, and there's a trough of low pressure to the north. What we're looking at here, by the way, is the jet stream or the upper air winds. This is really going to help in the steering of the system as well. Now it's kind of stuck in the same area here with that high pressure and that trough. So it's been kind of meandering in the same area for the past few days, but eventually, an area of high pressure develops here off to the east northeast of it, and that'll help it jog to the north. Now, once it gets to the north, say parallel of the Delmarva Peninsula, it'll start to meander again as it gets stuck in the atmospheric roadblock once again. So we'll have to determine here as we get closer how close it comes to the eastern seaboard or how far offshore it stays. Some of the models have it sitting there and meandering for several more days. And another factor of why uh, it hasn't really strengthened is going over the same area. It's moving in its own wake. So that means the warm ocean waters have been churned up a lot and some cooler water has been kicked up from below. So that means the water at the surface isn't as warm anymore for that to use as fuel. A couple degrees, but that's really all it takes. I'm going to end here on some hurricanes that have had this weird sort of loop thing. Although it's rare, it's not uncommon. In fact, one that you might remember, Ivan, back in 2004, uh, grew to a strength of a Category 5 hurricane, actually had two separate landfalls in the United States. And that same year, Gene also had a loop-de-loop. -loop. So two systems in one year, that's quite unusual there. And some other areas that uh, were impacted by other storms were Nicole last year, 2016. No landfall there, but there was also Betsy and Dennis back in 1999 that brought some very rough conditions to the Outer Banks of North Carolina. That's all I got to say today. We'll continue to track Jose and see where that trends over the next few days and how long it meanders in the same location. But if you want to join the conversation online, you can find me, meteorologist Tim Pandagis, on Facebook and 13 Tim Pandagis at Twitter.